Welcome back. Finals day, week four. Emily Appleton has already been victorious, seeing off her arch rival, Elise Maloney, in two very tight sets. Still to come, not before 4.30 this afternoon, the men's final featuring Dan Cox, uh, bidding to win for the first time. He's in his first final of the series up against Henry Patton, who was the runner-up just a, a few weeks ago in week three. But before that, we have the men's third and fourth place playoff. It's Luke Johnson against Josh Paris and it should be a very tight match because they met during the week and just a couple of points decided the contest. Luke is 27 years of age. He was actually injured in week one. Didn't play in weeks two and three but has certainly made his mark over the past few days losing only once in the group stage before going down to Dan Cox yesterday. He played county cricket for Yorkshire until the age of 15. He's a massive Leeds United fan well, obviously, he'd been very disappointed by their performance against Brighton yesterday. Cites his grandfather as his biggest influence. And he's also a big fan of One Direction. One way or another, he needs to rediscover his A-game today. His opponent, Josh Paris, is 24 from London. He's half French. Has a big game that led him to victory in week one. He started this week in third place overall. Won all five of his group matches, including... That one I mentioned against uh, Luke Johnson, who he leads 2-1 in their head-to-head -head series. He's an Arsenal fan, and he has his mother, Natalie, courtside with him. She is French and both a psychologist and a nutritionist, but she is here simply to offer some moral support this weekend. I've got Calvin alongside me for this one. Of course, he's got one foot very much in the Johnson camp because he has been coaching him. Um, what was he like after that performance yesterday in the semis? Obviously, he was going to be a little bit deflated. Yeah, it's a bit disappointed. But I think when I spoke to him, it was a couple of hours after because I was watched a couple of the other matches. And um, I think he just felt like he, he played well overall. He just didn't execute on those sort of three-quarter length mid-court balls that he needed to do to win the match. And I think he, we thought that if he'd have executed maybe... 60% of those, then he'd have won the match, but in the end he only executes about 20% of them. In terms of the mindset, of course, playing the third place playoff is not something you do regularly. It's got the pluses and I guess some minuses if you are feeling flat after yesterday. Is he the sort of guy who will thrive with an opportunity to finish on a high? Yeah, both these guys, I think they're very competitive. They're definitely not going to sack it off and, and that kind of thing. There's money at stake, there's points at stake. They're both going away to tournaments soon. They want to go on a high. They want to go. They want to beat. And they're also pretty close friends, so they want to beat their mates as well. Yeah, and uh, just in terms of that match I talked about earlier in the week, it couldn't have been closer. 10-8 in the final set tie break. Do you think it's going to be as tight again this time? I, I don't imagine one of them is going to win easy. I think it's going to be close, pretty close. Either two close sets or maybe even another tie break, I would imagine. Mm. You mentioned the, the, the ranking points and, and, and the money. Let's just have a look at the top of the men's table. A reminder that it's the top eight who will qualify automatically. Uh, this is the, the situation as far as the first six are concerned right now. There is Josh Paris in fifth place, uh, primarily because of what he achieved, of course, in week one. But if Luke was to uh, come out on top today, irrespective, actually, he's either going to get 12 points for coming third or 10 if you're fourth. So Luke is going to find himself just outside the qualifying positions, which just goes to show one good week can make a, a huge difference in terms of qualifying for finals week, Calvin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's what they're all aiming for. They all want to play in that Masters week uh, and that's what they're focused on. Luke was a bit unlucky. He got injured in the first. He won, won both his matches and then got injured. So he, he ended up having, getting zero points for that. And of course, he then missed the next one because he was recovering from injury and then he, he was booked to play abroad, play tournaments abroad. So I think he'll play most of the rest of the tournaments when we come back for the second block, block of them though. So I'd imagine he'll be pretty keen to get into the qualifying. And in tactical terms, what should we look out for in particular today? What uh, can you tell us in terms of a, a Johnson <laughs> secret at least? Um, so last time when they played, both these guys like to come forward. They're both really good volleyers, both got decent approach shots. And last time we felt that Luke, that Josh got away with floating a few too many balls. Luke hung, hung around at the back of the court a little bit too much. So one of the things we'll be looking for is for him to get in a lot more um, and not allow Josh to float his backhand back deep. And one final point, when we watched you yesterday courtside, it appeared as though you were spending the whole match texting friends. <laughs> we need to stress that you are not being distracted by anything that uh, is unconnected to the tennis. No, I, have, I have a charting app on my phone, phone, that's what I was doing. So you track every single ball, the first serve, the second serve, the return and the last point. So. Yeah, that's what I was doing. I wasn't, I wasn't texting. I was actually watching the match. Okay, yeah, so you won't be distracted by anything Manchester United might be doing later on this afternoon. Um, Calvin, good luck. It's going to be exciting. We look forward to getting your thoughts afterwards. We'll head up to the commentary box, guiding us through this one. Gigi alongside Jenny.
Thank you, Marcus, and thank you very much to Calvin. Yes, I, it's, it's good that he pointed out that he's not on his phone, because I was concerned yesterday that I thought, who's Calvin texting? <laughs> he's got this amazing app that he showed us. He said Luke Johnson likes to see all the statistics and everything from his match, and he's logging every single shot of Luke throughout the contest. Yeah, he's gone digital. David Collins is, is stuck <laughs> with, the, with the paper and the pen, but... Uh, Certainly. No, it's interesting. So many players like the stats. There, We even see that on the WTA and ATP tours. Statisticians travel sometimes with some of the players to give them all the extra info because, you know, it is about small margins and it's, it's interesting to see how all the players respond to it because some would actually hate their coach being on the phone. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. would fire them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm definitely more a David Collins. I don't know if it's because I'm old, but I'm more a, a pen. And, and you have your computer. So <laughs> at the age difference in the commentary box today for this third place play of Jenny with a laptop and me with my, my notebook and multicolored pens. Well, my, mine's still multicolored, <laughs> to do, be you, fair. Yeah, you've gone multicolored <laughs> in there. But we're looking forward to this one. Josh Paris in your picture there, week one winner. It seems so long ago that Josh Paris took the time, and he was so frustrated. I saw him immediately as he left the court after that straight sets um, defeat to Henry Patton yesterday, and he was so frustrated One that he minute. wasn't able to bring his best tennis yesterday. Yeah, he would have been, because he was undefeated coming into that semi-final match. He knew that that was a winnable match as well, and what the stakes were, a chance to be in a final for a second time, and he just couldn't find a way through. He just wasn't able to produce the tennis that he had been earlier in the week. His serve as well just wasn't as effective and he missed a number of returns of serve to, um, and in addition to that, forehands as well. So basically, it was just a bit of a bad day at the office for Josh. Yeah, and you do get those and a lot is being asked of these players here. It's seven matches and seven in seven days. For Luke Johnson, it's the first time he'll have completed that because on week one, he took the tumble after a couple of matches and then he was away in Egypt in weeks two and week three. And, and here he finds himself so close to reaching the final, but the worst he'll get is a, a fourth place finish and, and 10 points. Exactly. The, the thing is, this match is, is so important for both players. It's a tough one. It's, it's kind of like in the Olympics when, when you're you lose out in the final spot and you're playing for the bronze medal is actually there's a lot at stake because you want to end the week on a high but it you have to have got over the the loss of the semi-final the day before so for both of these players they know that they can still pick up a lot of points a lot of prize money and it all they need to think big picture here in terms of trying to qualify for that big finals week at the end of the year so Certainly, I think it's going to be a tight one because these two faced off earlier in the week as well. Josh Paris coming through that in the match tie break. So I would expect this one to be very tight indeed. Yeah, looking forward to this contest. Luke Johnson in your picture there, just kicking the, just getting that bottle of water. There we go. Where is it? Okay, right. That's going to stay at the back of the court under the camera. And it's going to be Josh Paris to serve. So fourth meeting between the two, 2-1 two, in favour of Paris. And as Jenny said, they met on day three of this week, which is week four of the UK Pro League, our final week at the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre at Loughborough University. The right to finish third. As you touched on there, that's the big thing. It's dealing with the disappointment of not making the final, having to go again the next day and, and get yourself up for a match that you didn't want to be playing. Exactly. Both these players will be tired physically as well. They've got to pick themselves up and try and perform to the best of their ability once again. It's not easy to do. Slightly younger of the two, Josh Paris at 24 years of age, slightly taller, two inches taller at six foot three inches. That's a pretty big passing shot right there. It's a very different matchup for 
Luke Johnson today from yesterday playing Dan Cox, who is an aggressive baseliner. Paris will be looking to come into the net regularly. He saw his opportunity there, Johnson, and took it for the early opening. brother with him week one when he won the title. Mum Natalie in position in week four. Imagine there's not that many opportunities for them to get this up close and personal watching their son or brother or sister play. Calvin was telling me that his backhand down the line is one of his favourite shots. It's absolutely lethal. Well, two on the board in the first game, and it brings up an early breakpoint opportunity. The 27-year-old from Leeds. of play from Paris to save the break point. And good to hear him after the point as well. Yeah, we'll definitely hear some alleys. Tends to say that a lot on the court. Rocket on the first serve. His ace count yesterday didn't match what it was the day before. It wasn't close. 16 the day before. going to be key for him, Josh Paris, the big serve. It's super accurate as well. The players were all involved in the Highland Spring Challenge this week. Had to serve at some empty cans and Josh was extremely confident he would do it in the first go. And he did. So he did a lap of honour to celebrate. Oh, wow. Okay. And there's another serve that is just too good and it gets him out of a spot of bother. He saved a break point in that opening game to hold serve. But no lap of honour at this early stage. No, no. <laughs> I was actually sharing a court with him the other day and uh, he was helping me with the yips on my serve. So, uh, oh really? What, 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 what was the advice? <laughs> it's all mental, Jenny, is what you said. It's all mental. <laughs> just throw it out. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, Mum, Natalie, is a psychologist. So <laughs> uh, Marcus did actually ask him what said, um, are you here coaching, coaching? And he looked at Marcus and went, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mum <laughs> said, I am a nutritionist, which is very, very important, and a psychologist. Right, so you've got some mental yips on your serve. Oh, yeah. Right. It's highly entertaining if you're watching. The, the yeah. ball toss is slightly Dementieva-esque. Oh, really? Mm. Ah, that's interesting. <laughs> Luke Johnson. Thunders that first serve into the net, the 27 year old. Got to a Croy High of 671 in March last year. It's so difficult with the rankings at the moment, with everything that's gone on and not gone on. Yeah, 
think the next year is going to be very interesting to see how everything starts to play out. Yeah, as things start to open up and they're getting back into tournaments, Luke Johnson spent time, as did Josh Paris, out in Egypt, Sharm El Sheikh. Absolutely teed off in that return of serve. Quick work around the ball. It's got to have felt good. Yeah, great play from Paris. Really pushing Johnson off the baseline. Gets himself a little opening. It's a battle of the forehands right now, though. Both of them creating so much power. point from Johnson who managed to turn defence and to attack to get himself out of what could have been a very sticky situation. Yeah, it was the sneak into the net that caught Paris off guard. Johnson, a great volleyer, loves to come forward. Great doubles player too. Actually played the main drop doubles at Wimbledon 2019. Faced up to Nicholas Monroe and Misha Zverev. <coughs> Not on his own. It's <laughs> with Evan Hoyt. <laughs> be a little tricky on your own. That would be, yeah. And he said they are the toughest two opponents he has faced to date. But one great moment for him to make his Grand Slam debut at Wimbledon. backhand. One game it's definitely up and firing for Luke Johnson. It's a game apiece. Both men can settle into this contest with an important holder serve each. As you said, they're meeting on day three. I mean, it went the distance. It went 10-8 in the match tiebreak. Yeah, it was really tight because Johnson was actually in the second set tiebreak. He trailed 4-1, came back and won that. Paris was out in front in the match tiebreak, but it Got very tight indeed. Love fifteen. that serve and volley looks so easy.
Did you see the superstition there? Didn't walk on the line. It's getting very difficult as a tennis player. <laughs> to get that consistency early on Paris. Yeah, he's playing one very good point, then an unforced error is coming in on the next. It's not been easy to string a bunch of points together. That's the good point. <laughs> He backs it up, throws in a drop shot, draws his opponent in, and he holds to 30, so early stages of this third place playoff. And it's Josh Paris who leads on serve by two games to one. Welcome back to the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre. It's finals day of week four of the UK Pro League. A little earlier, Emily Appleton reigned victorious once again to win three of the four finals. And she's been in all four, defeating Elise Maloney in straight sets. Still to come, Dan Cox against Henry Patton. Patton was a finalist in week three. Dan Cox has reached his first final at his third attempt at the UK Pro League. And we're in front of us now, Luke Johnson serving us for the right to finish third. <laughs> And there's a lot of money still at stake. Finishing third, £3,000 and 12 points. Finishing fourth, £2,500 and 10 points. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Makes such a big difference to these guys as well. I mean, sometimes they can afford to bring someone on the road with them. Clean hold for Luke Johnson. First love hold of this third place playoff. More consistent of the two so far, Luke Johnson. Josh Paris needs to find his feet in this match, a match that he won earlier in the week, coming through 10-8 in that match tiebreak. is a type of player that you will see a lot of come-ons. There's a lot of self-belief there. Luke Johnson, definitely more subdued. Very 
very careful then not to knock over the microphone <laughs> at the back of the court. Thank you. <laughs> Our ears appreciate that. Yes, they do. happy with that <laughs> he loved it i mean that first one was incredible the pickup was just as good and then that running passing shot to top it off completely on the back foot had a scamper for his life ends up the other side of the court <laughs> with a big smile <laughs> said mum that's why you came <laughs> you had a front row seat for that mum <laughs> Fourth ace from Paris brings up a game point. a tidy return of serve in their previous encounter that wasn't working for Johnson he missed far too many returns of serve certainly didn't on that occasion though. and the back of the line once again it's a really difficult serve to read because of where Paris tosses the ball it's almost behind him. Excellent play from Johnson. the width of the court well that was the ball that got Harris out of the court pretty solid deep volley too he looks dialed in right now that's for sure as is that serve from Josh Barris. And again with Paris, it's getting the consistency. He needs to back that up with another big point here. Six aces for the match to this point for Paris. Yet to get an ace on the board, Johnson. But this is part of the Paris armory. And he gets it. A little fist bump. A little look over to his mum, a little nod from okay. mum Natalie. And five yeah. games into this third place playoff, we remain on serve and Paris remains ahead, leading 3-2.
It's lovely to have your company on finals day, our last day at the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre, part of Loughborough mm. University. We are indoors, but wonderfully the sun was shining earlier today. Temperatures finally seem to be going the right direction. I know, it seems a long time since it was freezing in week one. Oh, freezing. <laughs> I don't need my hot water bottle anymore. Uh, and you really <laughs> did have one. <laughs> That's a wonderful pass from Paris. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of room there, Paris, to get the ball past Johnson. But he did so very well indeed. That's not an easy shot. Yeah, week one, Josh Paris was wearing sort of a, a puffer jacket <laughs> and a change of ends at the end of <laughs> end of sets. <laughs> Freya Christie wouldn't Maybe allow her mum to bring her tea out on court. So cold. She said, no, not in case it gets knocked over. It was they. It's very cold. <laughs> it was chilly. Thankfully has changed somewhat. Getting there slowly but surely. Slowly. Always good when you nail it. It was looking brighter. <laughs> that was a tough volley to control. It was a straightforward hold of serve the last time for Johnson. Not on this occasion. That's the first break point opportunity for Paris of this third place playoff. Luke Johnson had one in the very first game of this match and now into game six and it's Paris's opportunity to try and grab the opener. Definitely feels now that Paris is playing his way into this match. Johnson, I would say, started the better of the two. Point from Luke Johnson. Paris taking the pace off the ball, try to change things up, but Johnson holding firm and saving his second break point.
That is such a sneaky little backhand flick from Paris. We've seen it a couple of times in this match already, but this was premeditated. That's really smart indeed. Is it right here? It's given him a third opportunity to break the serve of Luke Johnson. Oh, and he's done it. Into the net with a volley from Johnson. And there is the breakthrough for Josh Paris. 4-2 he leads first set. Yeah, the frustration mounting a little bit with Luke Johnson now who had been holding more comfortably of the two until Paris made that breakthrough. Yeah, you can see him chatting away to himself now. Frustration starting to build. Josh Paris starting to assert himself in this third place playoff. He breaks, he consolidates to love, and he leads by five games to two. It's lovely to have your company on Sunday of week four of the UK Pro League. It's the third place playoff. Josh Paris, after a slow start, has taken control. Beat Johnson in the match tiebreak on day three of week four. Now Johnson's serving to stay in the set.
We'll at least want to ask the question, Luke Johnson. I want to hand this first set to Josh Paris. And it is still just the one breaker set. Some big hitting. I think Johnson got caught a little off guard. He unleashed on his off forehand, but didn't think that Paris would get it back with such a good return. That's added the pressure to Johnson now, losing the first point on his second serve of the match and just giving Josh Paris the, the hope and the opening that he might be able to get the job done here. And Paris's unforced errors have pretty much halted at the moment. That's what was happening at the beginning of this match. <laughs> That's the first double of Luke Johnson coming at the worst possible time because it offers up a set point for Josh Paris. from Paris at the end there. Big smile on his mum's face. What a point that was to wrap things up, to close it out, to get the point, to get the break and to get the set. Josh Paris, first set, six games to two. off that first set from 
Josh Paris, Jenny. I tell you what, that <laughs> one is going to be clipped up and put on social media channels at the end of the social media boycott. That is for sure, because it was just stunning touch from Josh Paris. Here are the stats from that first set. Look, 50% of first serves in for Johnson. That's just not good enough to try and get past Paris. It's making it so hard for him to try and hold serve and especially when he's only winning 42% of his second serve points won. So clearly under a lot of pressure in his service games. The numbers for Paris though, looking far, far better indeed. Hello, Hi, Josh. Sorry, I no, didn't know I was doing this. I popped to the loo. No, we, <laughs> thought, we thought you were avoiding us. That's not yeah, a problem. You're, you're back. We're not going to keep you too long because I think Luke's already back and in position. Yeah. But how pleased are you? It didn't seem like the faster start from yourself, but how pleased were you that you were able to turn it around and, and close it out so comfortably in the end? Uh, yeah, obviously pretty pleased. I mean, I, uh, I started to play some really good tennis um, from, I think it was 2-2 two, two all. Um, just, you know, executing my game plan really well. Um, and yeah, I, mean I hit some <laughs> some amazing shots from nowhere. So um, yeah, I just got to keep it up now and uh, just just hopefully start strong this set and be ready for the battle. Yeah, how about that final shot to seal the set, Josh? <laughs> no idea how it went over, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm going to take it. It's uh, yeah, that is a highlight for sure. We're not going to keep you guys waiting. I think Luke is waiting for you, but Josh, yeah, well done and go. thank you for talking to us. <laughs> All right, thanks. That was very nice that he came back to speak to us. I know. It was, Luke and Luke waited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Luke. You can't hear us, but we do appreciate it. Just adhering to my media commitments. <laughs> yeah, and, and he said if, if he had remembered, because obviously you're in the zone, you wouldn't have gone to the toilet, but you know this is his priority here. So everything is settled. And as he said, it was from about two all in that first set when he started playing some good tennis, but yeah, that set point was special. <laughs> <laughs> it was so yeah. good. I'm I sure he'll remember that one. Probably couldn't replicate it if he tried. And having broken to win the set means he has the advantage of serving first in set two for the right to finish third in week four. Shaking his head, Johnson. Clearly still thinking about how things unraveled a bit in, in that first set. Absolute slap of a <laughs> forehand. Maybe he's trying to get a little bit of frustration out on the ball. That forehand is very big and heavy. Forehand of Luke Johnson at it again, and early opportunities. That's his first break point since the 
very first game of the match about opportunities to take the early lead. There it is, breaks to 15. Luke Johnson with the advantage in the break, first game, second set. I'm impressed with his response after dropping the first set the way that he did. He really dug in in that Paris service game. And got rewarded for it. And that has the advantage certainly going into this upcoming service game. Yeah, just played a couple of matches in week one. Got injured. Missed weeks two and three. Here he is, up just rounding up the balls. Playing for third and fourth finish. A good sum of money, a good amount of points, all going towards the overall leaderboard with the top eight qualifying automatically for finals week in December. Josh Paris already has those 18 points from week one. Finished seventh in week three. This will leave him in a healthy position. There's a consolidation for Luke Johnson. So a complete turnaround and a shift in momentum early stages of this second set with Johnson backing up the break for a two-love lead.
to Paris. Halter 15 gets himself on the board, but it's been a great start from Luke Johnson with the early break, leading by two games to one. The final day of week four of the UK Pro League in your picture, our week one winner, Josh Paris, also the winner of this first set by six games to two. He fell to Henry Patton in straight sets in the semi-finals. He had to pick himself up to play this final match, the seventh match in seven days. But it's Luke Johnson serving now with the early advantage in the second set. <coughs> serving with new balls. That's what you call a very good body serve. <laughs> Completely jammed up Paris there. Couldn't even get away the ball. County cricket until the age of 15. Luke Johnson then had a decision to make, and it was just his greater love of the sport of tennis that took him in the direction of a professional tennis career. That forehand was between a four and a six. Johnson to put it back through the middle. Yeah, especially when he'd missed the one before, just playing a bit safer, safer, but that catching Paris off guard. Just has to be careful, Johnson, just to maintain his his lead here. Just do the simple things. Don't try to be too fancy. There we go, there's confirmation. Call came from the chair. The players are calling their own lines, but the chair has the final say, and it is 3-1 in favour of Johnson. Yeah, Johnson will definitely take that. Paris was able to put Johnson on the back foot. Johnson knows as well that in their last meeting he managed to win the second set and given the format that it is with it being a match tiebreak to decide the match it's far easier to recover from losing the first set. Oh, another backhand from Paris. He's been sublime today. Yeah, he does enjoy the glory shots off that backhand, and my goodness me, they're working well today. <laughs> you can see Luke's reaction in that replay. You can't believe it. Still to come today, Dan Cox against Henry Patton to be week four winner. Yeah. 
comfortable from Paris. It was just his wobble in the first game of the second set when he was broken to 15. He's been comfortable following on from them, but Johnson still with a break, 3-2. UK Pro League Week 4, the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre, our host, part of Loughborough University. And the sun has been shining at the start of May, this May bank holiday weekend. A lot of people, there's a day off tomorrow for winner Emily Upton. There's a flight to Israel at 8 a.m. That's an early start, isn't it? It's a very early start. It's a good here is drive for them back as well this evening to pack. Hasn't been abroad this year. Oh, oh. Something that for so long has been so normal suddenly becomes quite alien. Yeah, she was actually slightly, I wouldn't say worried, but just having to think about a lot of other things. The organisation said it's actually quite difficult with the, all the testing, etc. The extra stress, maybe, that yeah. goes along with travelling now that wasn't there previously. brought up set point for Paris in the first set. Opportunity for Josh Paris to get us back on serve in the second set. Three of them. drop shot because Johnson was so far back, did so well to get up to it, but then it put Paris in control. He breaks to love, he breaks back, it's three games all. What a last point there. I wondered whether or not the ball on the baseline was in or right. Johnson smiling at the end of it. It was a great drop shot from Paris because he knew that Johnson was so far back behind the baseline. I love how he gives a fist pump to his mum. I don't think I've ever fist pumped my mum. <laughs> <laughs> I might try it. <laughs> sure in what really. context? Yeah, just yeah. any context. <laughs> mum, I've taken the children to school. I'll just give her a fist pump. <laughs> mum, Natalie. Johnson will be really disappointed. Came out firing at the start of set two, putting the disappointment of losing the first set behind him. But now we're back level. Oh. Unfortunately for him, the serve of Paris is firing. Second ace in the second set. Yeah, it's really tough to break the Paris serve. 
when he is booming down ace after ace. And also Johnson will just be thinking of the opportunity he had, obviously led by a break. Now he's handed it back. That is ace number nine of the match, three of the second set, and what it does is consolidate his break back. We are on serve, but Paris is leading by four games to three. It's lovely to have your company. There's a bit of a spring in the step of Josh Paris now, having taken that first set and being a break down but as he did in the first set just been able to get his game back to where he wants and and needs it to be but we are on serve a little bit more pressure now on Luke Johnson because he's coming from behind 3-4 in the second set Luke Johnson needs a really tight game here. He doesn't want to let Harris run away with this match. <laughs> Sites his grandfather as his biggest influence, Luke Johnson. Sporting hero is Andy Murray. I wouldn't mind a career as a sports agent if tennis doesn't work out. Agent's a tough role. Mm. I'd be a terrible agent. So would I. Lucky we're not. Very heavy forehand from Johnson for game points. Also, they like turn his hand to a bit of commentary. We should get him in the commentary box doing UK Pro Reboot. We had Emily Appleton in a couple of times earlier in the week. I don't think Johnson avoided the front microphone there. Crashed into it. Off he went and in he went. Makes it look so easy, Josh Paris. Finding the space, putting a little bit of pressure now on Luke Johnson. Things tighten up. <coughs> also eats a plant-based diet, Luke Johnson. I'm not really sure what that would consist of a day. It means, but he says it makes him feel fabulous when he's life changing. Uh. 
There's a lot of people here now, especially athletes, following plant-based diets and not missing meat at all. So as we just Googled to find out some recipes to make, and initially it was quite hard on the road because you're staying in hotels and you don't have your home comforts around you. It's a little trickier, but he's got into the swing of things and he says it makes him feel an awful lot better. Not sure he'll feel that good right now, though. He's under a lot of pressure. that Josh Paris has a point to break and serve to finish third in week four of the UK Pro League. It's the sixth break point opportunity of the match Paris he's converted on three occasions. This could be the most important of them all. serve from Johnson. He's gone into the body of Paris a fair few times, trying to bunch up the six foot three inch player. is a bit of a mirror image of how the first set got away from Johnson. He's just double faulted at key moments and allowed Paris into his service games. Paris right now will want to take this opportunity and wrap up this match. Frustrated to make an error though on that occasion. You worked so hard to create an opportunity, it's not easy to take when you make a simple error. himself across this finish line, Josh Paris, because he knows he breaks here, he serves for the match. Third opportunity in this eighth game. He's looking pretty subdued right now, Johnson. Be a bit fed up with himself. Oh, what a point. And it's the backhand that comes out on top for Paris once again. A little highlight reel for Josh Paris in this match. He takes the break and he leads 5-3. How on earth Paris managed to get back in that point? I do not know, other than hitting the back corner. Again, the little flick doing the job. Must have practiced that one. Johnson's not going to want to see that backhand flick for a while after this match. So Josh Parrish, Paris, a game away from finishing third in week four. Week one winner, wasn't here. Week two, seventh place finish in week three, and he's looking to go back up to third place. If he can hold serve here at 5-3.
I heard you say earlier in commentary, Jenny, this is the, the hardest point. It's trying to close out the match. It is because, understandably, the players think about the scoreboard, get nervous because they just want to get it finished, wrapped up, be back in the locker room. You just got to play it like any other game. Like a bit of a tight backhand. It's going to have to try and find some big old first serves to get him back in this game. That's one of them. Number 10 of this contest. Johnson had the second serve there, not to meet the return. If he'd made it, gone for it, could have been a couple of great points in his favour. Race number 11 of the match. Josh Paris, our week one winner, has a match point for a third placed finish in week four. If he can find some more points. Opted for the serve and volley. Didn't come off though. It was a pretty good return from Johnson. Had to hit up with that volley. You can see him having a bit of a smile now. afternoon. I cannot believe it just skimmed the net. A couple of times it's happened now with this wide serve. I don't quite know what happened there for Paris because he had the point on his racket, didn't do enough with the volley at all. Pretty much hit it straight back to Johnson. And that match point up to 
to break point down. It's lucky someone's keeping an eye on the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Knows where they all are. He's up and about. Really wants to wrap up this match here and now. Once again, the touch from Paris. Really has showcased that the whole way through this match. Possesses such a big power game, but has great hands at the net. to have got a man of all sorts of spots above her <laughs> you can see there Johnson getting frustrated because there's absolutely nothing he can do he's working so hard to try and break back to stay in this match and then Paris just diminishing that little hope with massive serves on hips and the fist pump from Paris. Contrast in emotions brings up match point number two for Josh Paris. That's it, and it's fitting that it finishes with a backhand winner. Josh Paris will finish third in week four of the UK Pro League. He's done it. He's closed it out in straight sets against Luke Johnson. A little fist bump for mum, Natalie. He will take home £3,000, and more importantly, I think 12 points on that leaderboard to add to the points he's already amassed as he looks to make the finals week in December. The top eight qualify by right. Josh Paris is in a very good position after the straight sets win and a third place finish. Jenny Drummond. I have to say, I'm quite impressed with Josh Paris out there today, especially as we mentioned, the backhand flicks, the backhand passing shots, they were coming thick and fast. It was a really solid serving performance from Paris, 73% first serves in and winning the same amount of those. Really, for Johnson, it just didn't go his way from about two all in the first set. He did lead with the break of serve in the second, but it fell by the wayside when he allowed Paris back in the match. And then, well, he just ran away with it in pretty good style, especially on that match point. Match yeah. point and set point, two match of the best point. points of the match. Exactly. They're the points when you want to finish off with style, and he did. There will be little highlights reeled from that match, largely on the backhand side for Josh Paris. Took him a little bit of time to get into the match. We talked about this wasn't the match that these guys wanted to be playing, and they want to be playing in the final, but there are points. There is prize money up for grabs, and Josh 
Paris is, I hope he doesn't go to the toilet before he speaks to Marcus. Thank you with us. Marcus <laughs> might be waiting for, no, he hasn't. He is there. Josh Paris, your winner with Marcus. Josh, many congratulations. Fine end to the week against a very tough opponent. What was the key to getting the job done today? Um, to be honest, I, I thought I played really well. I, um, again, had a kind of game plan. I wanted to be aggressive. Luke's a great player. Um, he's strong off both sides, so I, had, I knew I had to play my game, and I think I, I did it really well. How much of a relief was it to hold on in that last service game? Ugh. Because you were so close and there was a danger it was going to get snatched away from yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, he hit a good shot to be fair on match point. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I just, yeah, big relief. It's been a long week, so I, I didn't really want to stay an extra half an hour, whatever it was. <laughs> Talk us through the point that decided the first set. I think that's going to linger a long time in all our memories. I mean, I could tell you that I meant to do it. Um, I did mean for it to go over, obviously, but not quite that good. So, no, honestly, I, you know, I went for it, and you got to go for it for it to happen. So, it well, worked out well. Yeah, it worked extremely well. And tell me, you're you're a lovely, softly spoken guy off the court, but I heard the roar towards the end there. You you know how to get yourself pumped up when you have to, don't you? Yeah, I mean, like I I I, I um you know Federer and and Nadal are big inspirations of mine, and you know they you can see that they've got it in them as well. So I think it's important to know when. I think uh, I also think it, it's a bit more of a statement when you do it in a big moment. So I've learned from some of those top guys when to do it. So. Are you more reluctant to do it when your mum is sitting just a few feet away watching your every move? <laughs> Not really. Uh, you know, she's, here, she's more here for moral support. But uh, um, no, I mean, she's, you know, it's nice to have her here. She rarely gets to see me play. So um, no, I'm glad I could get the win for her. <laughs> Absolutely. You're riding high in the table. What's your summer schedule and, and what are your plans in terms of weeks five to eight? Uh, definitely going to gonna play some. I'm not exactly sure which weeks yet. Um, I'm going to look to go and try and get my ranking up on the, the Futures Tour, hopefully, because I think I, I should be a bit higher than I am. Um, and then, yeah, definitely look to play, you know, a couple more weeks at least um, over the summer because um, it's been amazing. You know, all the guys here that are making it happen, it's, it's amazing for us players. So, yeah, definitely we'll be back. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, congratulations. It was Thank lovely you. seeing that backhand, the big serve. You've done well again this week, and we wish you Thank all the you. best for whatever comes next. Thanks so much. There we are. Josh, uh, victorious. Uh, Calvin's going to come in with uh, well, mixed emotions, of course, because you've been working with Luke. It was tight for long periods, and it, it, it did look as though he was going to make it very interesting in that last game. Yeah, Josh pulled off a great volley um, when he was break point down in the last game. It was an unbelievable pick-up that he's played there. And, um, but he's a better player. I mean, Josh served at 75% first serves, and when... When JP serves 75%, he's going to be tough to beat. Um, and Luke probably didn't volley as well as he'd hoped, didn't volley as well as he usually does. He missed some a few sitters, to be honest, that um, he'll, he'll be fuming about. But JP deserved it. He played really well. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Luke, obviously, it's, it's a disappointment to lose your last couple of matches. Are there sufficient positives that will make him eventually look back on the week with a, a degree of satisfaction? Yeah, it was, it was a strange week, really, for him. He, play, he played three, ma three really good matches and three matches where he'll, he'll just... He, didn't play well at all he'll not be happy with them so there'll be some things he can take away from it just matches and things that he can adjust on um he'll need to get his volleys i don't think he'll be too concerned about because he volleys so well first serve percentage he'll need to get a bit higher he was down at 53 percent i think again today so he needs to get that up a bit well let's have a look at uh, some of the key moments uh, in the match and uh, in particular that fantastic uh, point that wasn't entirely intended by josh paris which produced the winner this was uh, midway through the first set, uh, Calvin, obviously a, a, a key moment of the contest. That's a hell of a pass. Yeah, yeah, you see, he, gave, he gave Luke a lot of those little low dink shots that um, caused him a bit of trouble, and I think it affected Luke's confidence on his volleys overall. This was the set point, and he was <laughs> very honest just a few moments ago. He said, I, I'd like to tell you that I meant to do this. Well, yeah, that's unbelievable, yeah. It bounced about four <laughs> times on the net, I think, that one. But they all count. It's the best shot in tennis if you can play it, that one. Absolutely. And uh, then a key moment in the, in the middle of the second set as well with the Johnson serve under pressure. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that one again there. That's a put-away volley in Luke's hat. I think he must have mishit it. I think he came off his frame of his racket um, and then got himself in all sorts of trouble. That's a hell of a pass, though. Well, that was the break, uh, the backhand working there and uh, the match point as well. He, he actually finished off both sets emphatic and he clearly yeah. met that one yeah he's a strong laddie you need you need some serious strength in your arm to be hitting cross-court single-handed backhand winners and he's a strong laddie jp 
Yeah, so uh, it's success uh, for him. Uh, in terms of Luke's schedule, I mean, he's, he's managed to move himself up the leaderboard by finishing fourth. Who knows what's happening on the other court, but I hope they're okay. <laughs> what's, what's his plan over the next uh, few He's going to, we're going to Germany on Friday, so we're going to do a week of practice on the clay down at the NTC, and then he's going to Germany to play a clay court tournament there. And then from Germany, he's going to go and do two more, either in Bosnia or Croatia. We've not decided yet. And then he'll come back, and I think he'll hopefully play the grass, um, play a bit of doubles, maybe look at Wimbledon doubles, and then he'll play the rest of these, I would think, after Wimbledon. Good stuff. All right, Calvin, for the moment, thank you very much Cheers, indeed. Very much. Uh, we're going to take another break. When we come back, it is time for the men's final with Dan Cox, hoping to out-fox Henry Patton. See you in a moment.